right. Sweet. We're live. We're doing it. We're back at it. Good news for my dudes. I'm back. Here in my new place. Finally settled in. Ready to get back to regular streaming. I know it's not a Monday or a Tuesday, which is when I usually do these streams. That will be the case going forward. Monday or Tuesday. Um, of course, I don't have the notifications off. <laughs> Silly Sean at it again. Um, but, yeah, this is a Wednesday, but I'm eager to get back on it and doing this regularly. We got some devotionals, I think six or seven devotionals here, and we're going to catch up on uh, all the lost time. As people come in here um, live on Instagram, Sean B. Planet on Instagram, where I do these live. Um, again, Monday or Tuesday night, if you want to follow me and be on the lookout for like an 8, 9, 10 p.m. Central Time uh, start time, I'm going to be live on Instagram doing these. And if you're live here right now, which no one is yet, <laughs> hopefully that's just yet. Um, if you come in live or if you are watching this on a replay, then you already know, but you can catch this at SeanVPlanet.com. Um, there's a link for all my episodes and then also on Good News for My Dudes on YouTube, the channel Good News for My Dudes. Let's get into it. We're going to start reading. Hopefully people show up. I hate, it's almost unavoidable because they stream all the time, but I hate streaming while Hanging With Bears is streaming, but you know. They stream every night, so <laughs> it's kind of unavoidable. So I, I feel bad. I feel guilty because all my bears are, are watching, hanging with bears. But um, yeah, either way, we're going to start. Yeah, we're going to start. Oh, there's no one live because Instagram has still not told my followers that I've started a live video. Hang on. We're telling more followers. All right, well, hurry up, Instagram, because I'm live and I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm live and I'm doing it. We're going to start and hopefully Instagram tells people to uh, come in. And then we'll have a time. We'll have a time. So the first one here is uh, One Step Closer by David Roper. One Step Closer by David Roper. And the focus is Romans 13.11. Um, here we go. Nazarene follower. What's going on, my dude? Hope all is well. One Step Closer. By David Roper. Romans 13, 11 reads, Do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Some years ago, a friend and I set out to climb California's Mount Whitney. At 14,505 feet, it is the tallest mountain in the contiguous United States. Whitney is not a technical climb, but rather a long, exhausting walk, 11 miles of relentless ascent. The climb, though hard going, was exhilarating, with stunning vistas, beautiful blue lakes, and lush meadows along the way. But the trail grew long and exhausting, a test for legs, and lungs. I thought of turning back as the day wore on and the trail seemed to stretch endlessly before us. Occasionally, however, I caught a glimpse of the summit and realized that each step was bringing me one step closer. If I just kept walking, I would get there. That was the thought that kept me going. Paul assures us our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Every day brings us one day closer to that great day when we shall summit and see our Savior's face. That's the thought that can keep us going. That's the thought that can keep us going. Right on. Shout out, guys. Thank you for tuning in. It's still telling me that we are... Uh, it's. Um, Telling more followers to join. That's weird. Doesn't do that. Uh, maybe I'm just streaming by myself tonight. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to keep reading because these are some good devotionals. I'm a feeling these are some good devotionals ahead. We're behind. We're doing April devotionals because we are behind. I am behind. Um, yeah, the cost of fighting. The cost 
of Fighting by Bill Crowder. And the focus is James chapter 4, verse 1. It reads, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Again, Bill Crowder is writing this devotional. During a documentary on World War I, the narrator said that if Britain's casualties in the war to end all wars were marched four abreast past London's war monument, the processional would take seven days to complete. This staggering word picture set my mind spinning at the awful cost of war. Both soldiers and civilians pay the ultimate price, multiplied exponentially by the grief of the survivors. War is costly. Yeah. Hashtag no more brother wars. No more brother wars. You will not kill the children anymore. When believers go to war with one another, the cost is also high. James wrote, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? In our own selfish pursuits, we sometimes battle without considering the price exacted on our witness to the world or our relationships with one another. Perhaps that is why James preceded these words with the challenge. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. If we are to represent the Prince of Peace in our world, believers need to stop fighting with one another and practice peace. Whew. If we are to represent the Prince of Peace in our world, believers need to stop fighting with one another and practice peace. Yeah. Right on. Amen. Amen. The next one here is from Mart Dahan, and it's called Herd Instinct. And the focus is John chapter 10, verse 27. It reads, my sheep, my sheep listen to my voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Near Jivas or Givas, G-E-V-A-S, near Givas in eastern Turkey, while shepherds ate breakfast, one of their sheep jumped off a 45-foot cliff to its death. Then, as the stunned shepherds looked on, the rest of the flock followed. In all, 1,500 sheep mindlessly went over the cliff. The only good news was that the last 1,000 were cushioned in their fall by the growing woolly pile of those who jumped first. According to the Washington Post, 450 sheep died. The Bible often refers to human beings as sheep easily distracted and susceptible to group influence. We would rather follow the crowd than the wisdom of the shepherd. Yeah. There's a reason the Bible compares us to sheep. It's not an accident. I'm glad the Bible also describes sheep in a, pos in a positive way. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So the big question for us is this. Who are we following? One another, self-centered shepherds, or the voice and direction of the good shepherd? Make it a daily question. Am I listening for the voice of the good shepherd? Am I listening for the voice of the good shepherd? Are you? It's a good question to ask yourself. The next one here as we move along is by Dennis Fisher. And it's called Titanic 2. <laughs> Titanic 2. Um, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. The focus is Jeremiah 17, 5. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. 
Mark Wilsonson, Mark Wilkinson purchased a 16 foot boat for fishing and recreation, and he christened it Titanic II after the ill fated luxury ship that hit an iceberg and sank in April 1912. Yeah, hit an, hit an iceberg, quote unquote. <laughs> Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, we'll believe that, uh, we'll, 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 we'll believe that for this story's sake. Titanic 2's maiden voyage out of a harbor in Dorset, England went well, but when Wilkinson headed back, the boat started taking on water. Soon he was clinging to a rail waiting for rescue. Wilkinson reportedly said, it's all a bit embarrassing, and I got pretty fed up with people asking me if I had hit an iceberg. The story of Titanic 2 is quite ironic, but it also makes me think of the original Titanic and the danger of misplaced trust. The ocean liner was believed to be unsinkable. Many put their trust in that, but how wrong they were. Jeremiah reminds us, cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Our security is not in people or things. That's right. Our security is not in people or things. So, let's forsake false confidences and turn to God. We should never put our ultimate trust in something other than Him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, right on. Let's see. Yeah, we'll read three more. We'll read three more and call it a day. Call it a night. Instagram is failing me. <laughs> Instagram is failing me. So I hope you uh, rerun watchers are getting a lot out of this. That's weird not talking to people. Yeah. A Good Name by David McCaslin. A Good Name. And the focus is Proverbs 22.1. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Yeah. 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 Being a, a highly respected member of your community, building trust in your community... Definitely more esteemed. They're be be definitely better than uh, riches, silver, or gold. That is the true riches. But David McCaslin writes, Charles Ponzi's name will forever be associated with financial fraud. Yeah, Ponzi. In early 1920, he began offering investors a 50% return on their money in 40 days and a 100% return in 90 days. Money poured in. Ponzi used money from new, invent new investors to pay prior investors and fund his lavish lifestyle. By the time his fraud was discovered in August, investors had lost $20 million and five banks had failed. Ponzi spent three years in prison, was later deported to Italy, and died penniless in Brazil in 1949 at age 66. Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> Illuminati confirmed. Proverbs frequently contrasts the reputations of wise and foolish people. The name of the righteous is used in blessings, but the name of the wicked will rot. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. Solomon sums it up by saying, A good name is more desirable than riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. We seek a good name, not to honor ourselves, but to glorify Christ our Lord, whose name is above all names. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. We seek a good name, not to honor ourselves, not in vainglory, but to glorify Christ, our Lord, whose name is above all names. 
Yeah. Put your pride away. Put your vain to vanity to the side and seek the glory of God. Yeah. That is. That's true wealth. That's true wealth and true reward. For sure. So yeah, two more. Still no people. That's weird. <laughs> I feel so alone. <laughs> I feel so alone. No one is no one is alone with God. Nobody is a minority with God. So two more. This one's by Mike Whitmer, and it's called Not a Sprint. I almost said spirit. <laughs> One of those dyslexic reads. Mike Whitmer writes the devotional Not a Sprint. And the focus is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, which reads, I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. In 1983, a 61-year-old potato farmer named Cliff, Cliff Young showed up for a grueling, week-long ultra marathon from Sydney, Australia to Melbourne, 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 Australia, in overalls and work boots. Showed up to an ultra marathon in overalls and work boots. He started off slowly and soon was miles behind. But at night, as the other runners slept, Cliff took a quick nap and kept going. Five days and five nights later, he came in first and set a course record. Like Cliff, the Apostle Paul wasn't the most orthodox champion. He confessed to being the worst of sinners, and he suffered from a humbling thorn in his flesh. His enemies added to his struggles, beating him with whips and stones. But Paul was unashamed of his weakness, saying, The power of Christ can work through me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Yeah, when I am weak, then. I am strong. Remember the steady pace of Cliff Young and the Apostle Paul as you run your race. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Yeah, that's amazing. Isn't that just like amazing? <laughs> Isn't that just amazing? So yeah, we'll read one more here and call it a night. It was a nice little welcome back to the regular streaming here. Again, every Monday or Tuesday night, one or the other, it's not going to be posted in advance. It's just going to happen Monday or Tuesday night on Instagram Live. If Instagram works <laughs> for me in the future, apparently it's not working. I let one person in. Usually I get at least like five, like three to ten-ish people. Um... So I'm either not liked tonight, everyone's busy, or Instagram's messing up. Yeah. Or I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm hated now, I guess. Everyone hates me. <laughs> Everyone hates Sean. No, but for real, thank you all. I appreciate you all. I love you all. Um, and in the future, if you want to catch me live and get in the chat, hit me up with questions or comments on the devotionals I'm reading at S-E-A-N-V-P-L-A-N-E-T, Sean V. Planet, on Instagram, Monday or Tuesday nights. And as always, good news for my dudes on YouTube. Um, that's its own channel on YouTube. And you can find the link on my website, shambiplanet.com. We're going to want one more devotional here, and we'll call it a night. And, yeah, it feels good to do this regularly. And then, yeah, getting live stream Saturday morning. Um, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> um, you are. It's called the UR. Some might know what that means and what I'm going to be reading and talking about. But uh, yeah, Saturday morning. So yeah, this last devotional here is by Marvin Williams. And it's called Always on Duty. Always on Duty. And the focus is Hebrews 13, 7. Oh, here we go. Mr. Blue, my dude. <laughs> Sorry to cut into the Hanging with Bears time with you. Um, yeah, so I guess the Instagram is working for me. Mr. Blue, my dude. <laughs> Hope all is well, brother. Um, 
Yeah, sorry, you catch me here at the end. Wrapping it up. Last devotional I'm reading here. Um, catch good news from my dudes on YouTube for the replay. <laughs> Marvin Williams, always on duty. And Hebrews 13.7 reads, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Again, Marvin Williams writes, As my kids were discarding their trash at the local mall food court, my older son was almost run into by a man clearly on a mission. My younger son jokingly remarked, Maybe he stole something. Seeing this as a teachable moment, I said, That's what the Bible calls judging. He asked with a smile, why are you always pastoring me? After I finished laughing, I told my sons I could never take a vacation from shepherding them. Again, being a shepherd. The good shepherd. Paul told the Ephesian elders that they could never take a vacation from shepherding God's people. Yeah, if we are sheep, if we are dumb sheep that will fall for anything, um... Those of us who can see, who know God, and have a relationship with God, we can never take a vacation from shepherding. Yeah. And that's from Acts 20, apparently. Going to have to read Acts 20 tonight. Paul told the Ephesian elders that they could never take a vacation from shepherding God's people. He was convinced that false teachers would try to ravage the church, and the elders needed to protect the group from them. Caring for God's people includes feeding them spiritually, leading them gently, and warning them firmly. Church leaders have a big responsibility to watch over our souls, for they will give an account to the Lord for their work among us. Let's bring them joy by responding to their faithful, godly leadership with obedience and submission. Amen. Amen. Never take a vacation from shepherding God's people. I love that. That's amazing. We'll end it there. Feels good to be back. Another episode of Good News for My Dudes. Thank you for watching this at a later date. Since Instagram didn't send me anyone live. Mr. Blue, shout out to you. Nazarene uh, follower, <laughs> shout out to you for five seconds. Um, yeah, have a good week out there. I love you all. Take care. And yeah, have a good week.